perceptions that's, that's being, you know, bandied about. And then, of course, the, the remaining hour and a half, I'm going to use to really talk and look at, critically at this, um, the Ablai Cham Aisha Fati case that's ongoing in Senegal. So before I start, I just want to say this. Um, I know I've, I had loads. I think, I think the last time when I checked, when I checked my notifications, I had over a thousand messages on Messenger. Um, I guess everybody was so disappointed in me for actually, you know, losing it. I, I don't even know what happened that day. You know, I just lost it basically. And, um, I have so many people reached out to me and it just made me feel that, Hey, you know what? Levels are different and they're just certain things that one must maintain. So before I even go further, I just want to apologize yet again. I know I've done that on my Facebook, but I'm just going to apologize yet again to say, you know, I'm, I'm profusely sorry, apologize most profusely, um, for the fact that I came on my Facebook actually lost it and this was because I've already, I already explained I don't even want to go back into it you know I was I was informed about you know some crazy person you know disparaging my daughter and things like that so of course I lost it but um, I know I've, I've, um, I've apologized and I'm saying you know I'm sorry um, to all my followers and friends and people that so much um, respect and regard for me. I say I'm really sorry. And um, I believe that is something that would not um, happen again. So so really, if you're watching this live, if you could just share it for me, because I want to share the live, <laughs> but I need to get up and go get my other phone if I can do this properly. So I don't even know if I should, but... Um, or I should just continue. I want to share it on my face on my, on my other page on my on my other Facebook page, but it would mean that I have to get up and go. But let me just crack on with it. To be honest, let me just get on with it. So yesterday, um, I was on a TikTok, and I'm going to ask a question. By the way, I'm just going to ask a question. So if you can just help me through your comments. So I'm really, I'm really, um, I'm really very conversant with Facebook. But t TikTok is new to me. Even though I opened a TikTok account, I, I don't really know how to navigate TikTok well, you know. But um, I was I was I was told I had a conversation yesterday, um, and with um, um, Amy 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 Shilong, um, and she made mention of. Um, um, something she made mention of um, um, she said the way she said it was Dama guessing at egg see life be yeah that's how she said it so I just want somebody to just help me out what does it mean by Danga egg see life be I don't understand is it I, I watched it or is it me like getting on like you know how you, Facebook somebody would come on and invite what does it really mean if you guys can just help me what does it mean by Danga egg see life be like man like you know what does it really mean to egg on the live like on Facebook I don't understand because you know like when you go on TikTok and then when you start watching you click it tells you Mel is watching um so can you just if you guys by way of comment can just tell me what that means like on TikTok when you say like Danga egg see life be no, no, in somebody's hijab, not mine, not mine. I can't go live on TikTok. I mean, I was watching somebody on TikTok. Like, I just went on TikTok and I saw people discussing. Yeah, that, that's, that, if you can just, just, whilst I go on. So anyways, um, to quote a long story short, when I say that I wanted to address something in 30 minutes, it was basically because, um, when I, I, I called, I called, um, um, Amy Shillong, um, oh, that I went on the live. Okay. All right. Okay. That I, Okay, okay, I went on that person's live to contribute. So David, when you say on the live, is it to contribute or to watch? When you say the Dafa egg, is it to contribute or to watch? 
so anyways to cut a long story short so um we had a conversation because i was in a group and something happened so i was like oh let me call her and find out you know what's going on so apparently when i called her i think um she was already upset at me um i didn't know obviously common sense would have dictated that if i knew she was upset it meant you go on someone's live and you contributed okay so common sense would dictate that if I knew she was already upset at me, I probably would have just continued on my journey and not even call her. But I didn't know. I had no idea whatsoever. So I called her and of course she was visibly upset. And she then informed me that um, herself, that's um, Amy Shilon, that's herself, Nene Frida Gomez, Fatou Mata Rahman Koka, Juka Sise, and Khadija Tukinte, Hadija Tukinte, are absolutely upset at me because I was insulting their parents. Now, of course I said to her, I was shocked when she said that. I said, me, insult your parents? I was like, are you serious? I was like, how can I insult your parents? What did you do to me? Then me and you have an issue. Why would I insult your parents? I'll never do that. In fact, nobody on Facebook has heard me insult anyone's parents, be it in Facebook or outside Facebook. I think that was the first time ever. So I was like, what do you mean by that? And then, of course, she explained to me that I, to be honest, I'll, I'll say this. And I mean, like I always say, nobody's feeding me, so I don't have to lie or fake or there's nobody I'm scared of that I'll say something that I don't mean. If I don't mean it, I don't mean it. I won't say it. I, I, I never went back to watch that video. Never, ever. The video was deleted. I deleted the video after with all the calls and everything. So I never even went back to watch it. Because all I know is I absolutely and totally lost it. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen myself that way. I, I know, I don't even know what I, what I was capable of, what I would have done on that day. I don't even know. But I've never watched it. I've deleted it. I didn't go back to watch it. Now, what I said on there and what I did not say, I, I don't know. But what, one thing I know, absolutely as a matter of certainty, one thing I know is that I never, these people, these five people, Joker Cisse, Nene Frida Gomez, Amy Shalon, Hadi Jato Kinte, and somebody else, Fatou Mata Rahman Koka, like, I don't think I would ever, I don't think I'm drunk or to even drink even if I drink my piss, you know, even if I smoke kush, I don't think I'll ever come on Facebook and insult these individuals, their parents. Never in my life. Even whereas, even if I had a fight with them, because I don't have a fight with them. But let's say, let's assume that I had a fight with them. I had, um, you know, we were, we, we, we had the most, the, 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 the worst kind of disagreement. It's not something I'll ever do. Never in my life. And I made it very clear. And I said it. But when I spoke to um, Amy Shillon, she said to me, no. I said, so, so, so I said to her, I said, I didn't call your name or whatever. Why would, I, why would I insult you? And she said, for the mere fact that you said, apparently I said that everybody who is supporting Aisha Fati or team. She said, I said team Fati. I, I don't know what I said or what I did not say, but she said, I said that. Um, and I'm assuming I might have said that. Um, I'm assuming I might have said that. She said, I said, I insulted their parents. But I did say, I did say, at that point, I was super, super mad, super, super angry. I don't even know what I said. But one thing I do know, one thing I do know is that these individuals, these five, four people or five, know, absolutely. If they say they don't know, they're pretending. And I told them this to their face. So let me, let's get in clear. I told Fatou Rahman Koka to her face. I told Hadija Tukinte to her face. Oh, well, I mean on the phone. And I told um, Amy Shillon on the phone that do you think, do you think in my wildest dream, like man, I'm doff, I'm mental enough to ever insult you guys. The relationship I have with these people is like excellent. Absolutely excellent. For Nene, I'm not even talking about Nene. And that's what I told Amy Shillon. I said, I'm not talking about it because Nene is my sister. So... Uh, even if Nene believes that, I know Nene is pretending. And I'm saying, I'm saying this on Facebook, that if Nene believes that, she's pretending maybe 
to to be in a bandwagon with people that believe that are insolent. I, I'm saying this lie, and I'm and I'm directing this to Nene because she's my sister, you know. Because I would never, even if I were to insult the whole world, Nene is one person. Because because that that's my sister, that's my blood. So that's one person I would never ever say that to. In fact, these people, these five individuals, are people that even when I disagree with them. I have my limits of letting them know my disagreement. So I, for example, I, I, I was like, when I was talking with Hadija Chikin, I said like, have I ever, me and you, have we ever exchanged words? Like when, when, I, when I'm doing something or something's going on and Hadija Chikinte calls me and talks to me, immediately she says something, I'm done with it. It's a closed topic. For Nene, that's a, bit, that's a different ballgame. Nene, Nene, I would want to do something. She would warn me beforehand and tell me, don't dare. And that's what it is. It's done. I mean... I, I could accurately say that the closest person in my life, maybe, maybe, okay, I, let, let me, okay, let me rephrase, like, say one of the closest individuals in my life is Nene. So Nene knows that even if I woke up in a mental asylum, I'm breaking. Okay, I don't know why I'm breaking. So, so guys, am I breaking? Is it me or is it you? Am I breaking because I'm connected to my Wi-Fi? Can you guys hear me or you can't hear me? Because if nobody can hear me, then it means I'm wasting my time sitting here. So, Sabe Almani, I guess it's you because... Um... So, uh, so everybody else is saying... Okay, everybody else is saying I'm not breaking. So, I think it is you, Sabe. So, so, basically, I just wanted to clear that. And I'm... And I'm, like I said to Hadi Kinte, I'm not going to apologize for something I did not do. I'm not going to because if I apologize to it, I'm giving validity to it. I'm saying, yes, I said it. And I'm coming back to say sorry. And I made this very clear when I spoke to Fatou Rahman Kuka. I said, I'm not going to say sorry. I'm not going to apologize because I did not. And when I was saying those things, the last people, the last human beings... Like I would have ever thought of. I didn't even think about these people. I didn't even think like zero. I didn't think about them, sir. And I swear this on my mother's grave. I never thought about them. Never. Never thought about them. Not one single one of them. I never thought about them. Never. I never thought about them. So for me to knock up and say, oh, yes, you did. It's like, you know, I sat down today and I'm thinking. It's just like, you know how, you know, you would be having conversations and you say like, oh, Nigerians are 409. Or you say, oh, Arab people are very bad. It's that kind of thing. Because um, even though I say that, I would have a Nigerian friend who I'm, I'm absolutely not referring to. My aunt is Nigerian. I'm probably not, ref I'm not referring to her. I didn't even think about her. It's just that kind of saying. So if anybody wants to identify that, it means like the, the way I see it. Because today, like when I, I was talking to somebody to, that called me, because... Another another issue I want to address is that because somebody told me that um, when I spoke to um, when I spoke to Amy Amy Shilon she said to me that I told her that oh oh did somebody called me and said to me that Juka said oh that I wasn't a lawyer that people shouldn't listen to me and she said to me no no Juka didn't say that I said well I don't know it was somebody that told me I didn't bother because the thing is I've never seen these people until Amy Shilon told me that we are Team Juka and I asked her I asked her I said who is Team Juka. Who is, no, sorry, who is Team Aisha? And she said, it is me, Hadija Chukinte, Nene. And I said to her, listen, I said, if you tell me Nene, I know Nene has been supporting Aisha from day one. I know that. I said, but you people, I don't know. I've never watched. I've never watched. I've never seen you guys. I've never, I've never even come across. I said, because anybody that knows me, anybody that knows, and I'm sure Juka knows this. I'm sure Juka knows this. I'm sure Hadija Chukinte knows it. I'm sure Nene knows it. If I watch, a, if I was watching a program that Juka said, "Oh, Mel is not a lawyer," right there in the comment section, I will tell Juka what I had to say. So I didn't even see these things. But today, when I told, um, I was just explaining the scenario to to someone, and I said to her, "Well, I said I'm so confused." I said because these people said Juka said this. I said now I spoke to Hadi Kinte, I spoke to Amy Sheila, and they said Juka didn't say. It. And the person said to me. And the person said to me, yes, the person said to me, no, Juka said it. And then they sent me the clip that they did where Juka was saying, oh, ko, ko, I think Juka was saying it was right. Mune advocate, Muslim court gets a bench court, Muslim court gets defended, Momokowa, something like that, something like that. I, today I watched it. 
And, and, and the reason why I watched it was because I was trying to tell the person that, oh, they said Juka didn't say this. I said, you know, people just lie and stuff. And she said to me, no, she said it. She said it. And then I went and I listened to it. And I realized that, yes, she said it. But does that bother me? No, that doesn't move me an inch. What I know is what is sufficient for me. What other other person think about me is irrelevant. It does, it does not bother me. You know, that's on them. It does not bother me. But one thing I wanted to clarify, one thing I wanted to clarify I never knew these individuals because I spoke to them. In fact, I don't even want to delve into private things, but I, I contacted Nene, like, I think a couple of weeks ago, she was supposed to meet somebody for me, like a friend of mine that was coming to Gambia. I called Fatou Rahman to, you know, congratulate her on her um, her show that she started. So it doesn't even make... Harija Tukinte was on my wall, my picture. She was the person on my profile picture until I had somebody was... was um, 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 was messing with me and that was when I changed the picture to, to you know to caricature that individual and put on my it was Hadija Tukinte who was on my pic, on my on my profile because it was her birthday and I, I, I was late in wishing her a happy birthday even though I called her. So I thought you know the best way to do it is just to I mean she's a sister to put her on my profile. So when they said these things it didn't make sense to me. So I was like me, I will never you're the last person and I'm gonna say it again. Like I said I'm not going to apologize. I'm not gonna say sorry for something I didn't do. Never. Over my dead body I'll never do it. Never ever say sorry for something I didn't do. Now, when it comes to the bit about saying sorry because like they're my sisters and they're offended that I came to say such words or I used derogatory comments or I said things, then that I owe them an absolute apology like I did to everyone else. Like I did to everyone else, like I did to all my Facebook followers to say, yes, I'm terribly sorry. I was absolutely upset. I went, I went mad. I went bonkers. I don't even know what happened that night. I was very, very angry. And I've apologized to everyone. That is why I went back on my Facebook. I deleted everything. Even though I know people have shared it, I can't. I don't have no control over that. I mean, what I know is that what I'm taking responsibility for is that I know my wall is sanitized. There's nothing there that um, shouldn't be there. And I've done it. Um, so people sharing it and stuff, I can't stop them. That's their prerogative. That's their right. So that I can, I will apologize to. Like Hadi Kinte said to me that, you know what? Mel, I'm disappointed that you said that. You know, that was like a sister talking. That was somebody like, you know, telling me what I did. So if somebody tell me like Nene is mad at me, I know Nene would be mad at me for the fact that I did that. But Nene would never, ever in the, in my, in the life, well, things are possible, but maybe I'm not, I don't know the others very well to that extent to vouch, but I know Nene would never ever sit anywhere and say Mel insulted my parent. Never. Nene would never say that. And I'm making this public. She would never say that. Even if Nene says that, it would be behind my back to my face. Nene would never tell me that. What Nene would say, what Nene would be angry for, what Nene would be upset for, is the fact that her brother went on Facebook and said such despicable things. Of that, I, am, I apologize to all of her. I apologize to all of her. But to say that, um, I insult, I would never think of that. Never in my life. Even, for example, Juka. Even if I was going to have a fight with Juka. It was something that would not even happen because everybody on Facebook knows the way I'm like one of my greatest idols, somebody that I'm talking about all the time, somebody I, I worship, somebody I love so much is Juka's sister, which is Dr. J. So you think I would go and um, um, insult Juka's parents Then it's like I'm insulting Dr. J. That's something that never, I, I didn't think about these people. In fact, until yesterday, I didn't know these people were team, team Aisha or whoever. I just said that because as far as I'm concerned, I was told that, you know, some, some idiotic person was insulting me, insulting my daughter. And there were people there that are supporting Aisha Fati, commenting and, and saying whatever. So that was what I was referring to. That was what I was referring to. You know? That was what I was saying. But then, I want to address uh, the reason why. So that's, that's it. So I'm just going to make it, um, um, I'm just going to, um, 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 Make it very clear that I apologize most profusely for coming out, saying those things. I apologize to everyone, to all my followers, to all my sisters, to people, to Nene, to Juka, to um, Fatih Rahman, to Amy, um, Sheila, and Hadija I say sorry for, for um, um, speaking like that or saying these people have known me. Okay, Nene have known me almost all my life. The other people that met me on Facebook, they've never seen me spoken that way. People, I've been on Facebook longer than all of them. All of them. And I've gone, I've looked at all of them, their accounts. From Fatou Matar Rahman Koka to Nene to Juka to um, Hadi Kinte 
to Amy Sheller. I've been on Facebook. The year Facebook started, the month Facebook started is when I opened the Facebook account. So I've been on Facebook longer than all of them. Longer than all of them. I've been on my this this particular Facebook account. My other Facebook account was my like family or whatever my other name. But this particular Facebook account has been on Facebook for 18 years. And you guys can cross check it. Since 2007, it was on Facebook. So you can check it. So nobody has ever heard me in an outside Facebook speak like that. So if anybody wants to judge me and judge me based on that one instance where I was pushed to the wall, then that's fine. That's your business. I really don't care. You can go ahead and do that. You can go ahead and do that. But that is just one isolated instance. And all these people, especially Nene and Hadi Kimte, can testify how much people have done so many things to me, try to do, and I will never respond. I always say, I, I, I don't care. I don't care what is being said. And the other thing that I've always said, which I've made very clear, is that if somebody is insulting me, don't send it to me. Don't send it to me. I don't want to see it. I've blocked a few people who are my friends. I've blocked them because they sent me stuff that people are saying, oh, she's insulted. I said, I don't want to see it because the way I understand Facebook, maybe I don't understand TikTok. I understand Facebook very well. And I've programmed my Facebook in such a way that I don't see things I don't want to see. And if Nene is honest, Nene will tell you guys, because we've had discussions on, you know, some people that were doing stuff and everything. And we both say we don't see them anymore because she knows we, we talked about it. I don't see it. So all these things that was going on, I don't see it. I don't even know. But am I mad? Am I mental? Am I crazy? Am I crazy like me? The people that I roll with on social media, like Juka, Hadi Kinte, Nene. Well, Nene. Okay, Nene, I don't like to include Nene. I forget about Nene. I'm not going to mention Nene again because Nene is, like, Nene is my sister. So the other people that I roll on social media, you think me I'm crazy? Fatou, Fatou Rahman Koka, what, I have, what haven't I shared with, with Fatou Rahman Koka? And I was talking to Fatou Rahman Koka and she was so angry. She said, no, Dumala Balal, oh, I'm not going to forgive you. I'm going to take it to court. I'm like, fine, take it to court. If you feel that I insulted you, fine. Take it to court. I don't care. The mere fact that I called her, I called Fatou Rahman Koka, and I say to you that Fatou Rahman, no, I didn't insult you. Man, anybody that knows me, me, am I scared of Fatou Rahman Koka? Am I scared of Juka? Am I scared of Adikite? Am I scared of Amy Shailor? No, I respect them. I accept them as my, like my close people. But I'm not scared of them. If I, if I, if I insulted them, I, would come, I, I wouldn't come back and say, oh, no, I didn't. If I, I, I told Amy Shailor, I said, if I was insulted, I would call you guys your names. But am I mad? Have I, did I come across some different brand of kush that I will insult Amy Shailor? Me, Melville? I wouldn't even insult her, let alone insult her parents. And Michelle's sister, Say Ture, is like one of my closest people in this life. Say Ture knows we will fight, we will bring the roof that I will never dare insult her parent. Who on Facebook, who on Facebook can ever say they've heard me insult one person's parent or even insult a person? I don't do it. So I wanted to make that very clear. I don't do it. Now, if anybody say you're going to take me to court because I insulted you, that's your business. Carry on and do it. I'm not intimidated by those things. The mere fact that I've come, I didn't even stop there. I called all of them. Some I reached, some I couldn't reach, some I sent messages to, some ignored it. But I made sure I cleared my conscience so that these individuals know that I would never in my lifetime, never in my lifetime, go and insult them. And I said it very clearly, I will not apologize for something that I did not do. Because I did not have the, I did not have the men's ray, I did not have the, the mindset. I never thought about them. I didn't even know they were supporting Aisha, apart from Nene. I didn't even know. I've never seen. And, I, and, I, and, and when I spoke to them, I, and, I'm, and I'm doing it again, I swear on my mother's grave, on the life of my kid, I never saw them. I've never seen Amy Shailon, like, um, Shailon, um, share anything on Facebook that made me believe that. You, I, didn't, I didn't see these things. Fatou Rahman Koka, I didn't see nothing. The only person I know in my heart, Hadi Kinte, none. The only person I know in my heart that I know is supporting Asha was Nene. And I knew that. And, and, and that was clear. So, what I will apologize to them for is for me, as a brother, as a friend, somebody they roll with to, to hear me speak in that manner, speaking that I totally apologize. And one thing I'm, I can assure all of them, including my Facebook friends, including what I said to my family, including what I said to Plus with, is that it's never going to happen again. It wouldn't happen, sir, because I wouldn't see anybody insulting me. Because I've made it very clear to my friends. You send it to me, I'm going to block you. I don't want to know. Let them carry on. Those things don't bother me. Don't move me.
can say whatever. If, in fact, you can say, I just killed somebody. Do whatever. It doesn't move me. So that, I'm going to finally repeat. I apologize most profusely. Now, the second to last thing before I get into the Asha Fati case is this bit that I asked. Because when I spoke to Amy Shell and she said to me, Dama Gisinga eggs he life And I didn't understand because me, I don't understand TikTok. So when she said I eggs he life bit, today I went on, on TikTok and I don't see the thing. So when I go in, it will tell Mel is watching. And they know because they will tell me, oh, Mel, eggsing out, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, Mel, you're here. So I don't know if that's what she meant by egg or not. But somebody has clarified for me when I asked the question and that egg is like I contributed to that person's life. Now, I want to make this absolutely clear. And the... I'm speaking, I know, I know this is Facebook, I know somebody will give it to them if they, even if they're watching. I want to make this very abundantly clear. Now, one, I will never, like I said, I will never go on somebody's TikTok and insult all of these people that I mentioned. Amy, Juka, um, Hadi Kinte, Nene, never. I will not go and insult them on any platform. I will not even mention their name, let alone insult them. Never in my life, yeah? But I want to make this clear. If these individuals, if we got it, and now I'm speaking to, to, to Auntie Amy, Amy Sherland, because she's the one that tell, that said that to me, that I saw you going on the lap. I think Fatou Rahman Koka said that. But for me, I came home and, you know, the whole time, you know, like me at night, I don't sleep. I'm processing everything they said. And I said, look here, you are rolling. You, are, you have your platforms. You're sitting there with somebody that has been insulting my parents for five years. I didn't question any of them. It didn't change my relationship with any of them. I was on a Facebook live when Juka asked me to take a position because that crazy, idiotic girl was arrested. And Juka said, and I told Juka respectfully, I said, Juka, I'm not going to say nothing with regards to that, but I will speak on the issue on her detention. About her, I said I wasn't going to say nothing. And that life, I remember Omar Wali was there, but I sat in the life. I respected their rights to, to associate with whoever. I could have told Nene. I know Nene took that girl for, to, out for dinner. I'm talking to Nene. Nene told me she's out with her for dinner. We are talking. We are laughing. Because I know that's her right. I know Nene is a public figure. I cannot expect my enemies to be Nene's enemies. I cannot expect my enemies to be Amy Shalon's enemies. I don't expect my enemies to be Hadi Kinte's enemies. Neither do I expect my enemies to be Fatou Rahman Koka's enemies or, or Juka's enemies. You're rolling with a person that has been insulting my mom, insulting my parents. You're bringing her on her platform. You're rolling with her. You're doing things with her. I've never questioned any of you. So how can anybody question me because I go on a live and those people, somebody insulted somebody? How can I do that? I will go on any live. Let me make it abundantly clear now. Any live that somebody invites. And me, I don't just jump into people's life. Especially on TikTok, never. If I go on a live on TikTok, it's because somebody sent me a message and said to me, Mel, we are live. Can you come? There's some issue. Can you come and clarify? I will go on the live. I will say what I want to say. In fact, if you listen to most of the live, Sheikh, go and ask Sheikh Ahmed Sise. I will go on the live. I will speak what I have to say. When she starts, when he starts getting into other things, I will tell him I'm sticking to the law and I will come down the live. I don't know. Is it come down? Watch it. Yeah. I will get off. But nobody has the moral standard or yardstick. And I'm talking, and I'm referring to Juka. I'm referring to Hadi Kinte. I'm referring to Amy Shalon. I'm referring to Nene. None of them can tell me that I shouldn't go on a live because that person insulted somebody. Because you have been on a live, you have invited a person that has been insulting my parents and doing whatever thing on your live and on your platform. I can interpret that as you guys giving it validation. I can interpret it as validation to the highest esteem, but I've never done it. I've never done it. Never. And Nene, if Nene, Nene is a Christian and Nene will not lie. Nene knows that I have never. Juka brought a person that lied against me, accused me on her platform. On her platform to interview her. She celebrated the person. The only person I told was Nene. I called Nene. I said, you know why I didn't go on that live? And she said, what? I said, I saw you commenting. I said, but do you realize this was the same person? 
And she said, ah, Bell, forget those things. And I respected it. I respected it. Auntie Amy, I can see Auntie Amy watching me now. Can Auntie Amy tell anyone that I have ever, ever said to her, oh, Auntie Amy, I'm going to disrespect you. Auntie Amy, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to do this because I see you rolling with this person. This person insulted me. No, I will never do that. My mindset is phenomenally different. I will never do that. Because I understand they have, they have a project. They have an advocacy to extend and expand. I cannot determine who they roll with. I can't. So when I go on a plan, and the reason why I contact, uh, contacted Auntie Amy was when I heard them saying stuff. I didn't even know it was her. Because I always call her Amy and they were saying Amy. So I was confused. But if I knew she was mad at me already, if I knew she was mad at me already, I would never have called her. And I'm saying this and she's watching me and I'm saying it. I would never have called her in a million years because I knew she already was mad at me. I called her innocently. Innocently. I was, I was going on my way on a journey and she knows. Innocently I called her. Because she's somebody I love and admire. Innocently I called her. Of course, that was when she said to me, but Mel, you were insulting me. And I said, no, am I mad? Am I mad to insult you? No. I didn't even think about you guys. I didn't even think about you guys. If I was thinking that you guys were mad at me for anything, it was for the fact that I came out shouting and yelling and cussing and stuff. But I just wanted to make that very crystal clear. If I see a TikTok, they invite me, I go, I speak on the law, and they decide to insult whoever. That is their business. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold brief for anybody. Because the the, the the custom, the custom, the culture that has been set is that you guys are not bothered about who insults me. You guys are not bothered. And I respect it. I've never ever ah, I, how many times after that when Juka defended her, Juka said it, Nene defended her. Omar Wali told me clearly that no Mel, it's not about an individual. It's about the, the, the thing. It's about the person being detained. I agreed. I said, I respect you guys to do whatever. I said, but I will not validate a person that sat insulting my parents. I will not speak about them or, or with, that, with anything to do with them. And I made it clear on Juka's life. Very clear. Crystal clear. But out of respect, I stayed on that line. And Juka is not alive. Juka is, Juka is not dead. I stayed on that line. I contributed in my own way. And I respected all of them. I still consult Omar Wali. I still talk to Omar Wali. Even though I saw Omar I could have said, oh, Omar Wali, you're defending a person that you've seen insulting my parents. So I'm bad at you. No, but I didn't do it. I didn't do that. Because I know this is their right. This is their job. This is what they do. Can I can I determine that all my enemies should be Nene's enemies? Then Nene, Nene wouldn't do anything for anybody. When Nene was going to bail that girl, Nene, I was talking on the phone with Nene. When Nene was taking her to a restaurant, I was talking on the phone with Nene. Let Nene come out publicly and say that Mel told me not to go. Or Mel said to me, why should you go and bail it? Nene is my sister. I could have told her that. I could have told her that. And I want somebody to send this video to Nene and say, I could have said it, but I never said it. Because I respected her right to do whatever advocacy she has to do. That is her job. That is her job. I respected her. So I don't know anybody that insult. When I go on Cher's life, I say what I have to say with the law. I get out of there. I get out of there. So I just wanted to be clear about that Danga Egg life. I know Fatman Rahman Koka told me, oh, every life they're insulting me, you go there. That's, that's stupidity. Why would I go to a life that they're insulting you? Why would I go to a life that they're insulting you? Of what business do I have? Of what, what does it value me? What does it give me for me to go on a life that they're insulting you? If it was Facebook that I understand very well, if it was Facebook that I understand very well, yeah, maybe. But TikTok, me, I don't even know. They just call me, Mel, come and answer this question. I go jump. I say what I have to say. In fact, in fact, the only time I started commenting a little bit more 
a little bit more on this issue, like with regards to the facts, was when this girl was like insulting me or saying that I'm defending, I'm going against Aisha. And that was when I started going a little bit more. A little bit more. But nobody would ever say, I've ever said anything negative against Aisha Fatih. What have I said anything negative? Let them pull it out. They are so good at bringing out receipts. Show me where I said anything about Aisha Fatih. So me, I'm done with that bit. I'm never going to address it again. Never. The people I've called, I've called them. I've said sorry to them. And I said sorry for the other reasons why I think I should say sorry. I'm never calling nobody again. If anybody feels that me, digger, digger, and they believe it inside their heart, that really I did insult them, let them unfriend me and block me on Facebook and never talk to me again. If they're conscious, if they're satisfied, we're both Christians and Muslims. If they're satisfied on their faith that, yes, digger, digger, this guy, he was insulting us and he deliberately wanted to insult us, let them come out. Let them block me, unfriend me on Facebook, and we all just go our separate ways. But I know I never did that. And I would never do it in a million. I would not duffle myself. I'm not mad. I'm not mad to ever. Am I crazy? The closest person in my life... Anyways, I'm not even going to go back there. Now. So, basically, um, so like I said, today they sent me that, that video. And it's the particular video they sent me where Juka was saying... Um, I should go and apologize to Aisha's parents because I said, how, how can I say that? Because I, as a lawyer, should know that I said that Aisha was charged for another crime. I listened, and because the time, the I didn't have time because I wanted to do this live and I had other things to do. I wanted to go back on my own life to, to, to really check to see whether it's, that, that's what I said, that I said that she has been charged on a second offense. Because if that's what I said, then I misspoke. Because I did not intend or meant to say that she was charged on a second um, crime. Because that would be stupid for me to say she was charged. And then I say, but she's being investigated. No. What, what, what I think I said was that the reason why Aisha is detained was that because of this other matter. This other um, offense of fraud. And that's why she was detained. If, if at all what Juka is saying or whether she said that to, 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 to disparage me. Because she says I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. I'm going to go back. I'll take time by the end of the day tomorrow. I'll look at what I have said. If I said she was charged on a second offense, then yes, I, she was, she's never, she's not been charged. So I don't know how I would have said that because I keep, I know I've talked a lot. Um, no, Amy, they, I didn't even know the lady insulted me in their lives. You see, you're just telling me now. I didn't even know she did that on their lives. I didn't even know. But I don't care. I don't give a damn about that, to be honest. I don't care. If anybody thinks I care, they've made the greatest mistakes of their lives. They know I don't care. To be honest, I don't care. But I didn't know. But just thanks for bringing, me, bringing it to my attention. I didn't even know. I thought she was doing it on her platform. I didn't know she came to their platform to do it. But to be honest, I don't care. I'm, I'm at a point in my life right now with everything that is going on. I mean, them saying that I insulted them when they know I will never insult them. To be honest, I'll tell you, as a, and I'm saying it live on the other, I don't care. I really do not care at this point. I mean, whatever's going to happen, happen, relationship, silver, we all part and go our way. That's it. I'm done. I don't care. But thanks for letting me know, though. The other bit that I wanted to say, um, yeah, so going back to that old, uh, the video they sent me today, and the reason why they sent it, but because I was telling the person, oh, but they said Jika didn't say that, but I listened to what she said. So, so, um, she said that, oh, Musa Makogis, yes, Doma Musa Gis, because have a Loma that much. You don't know me that much. We don't roll like that, so you'll never see, you know, never see that. But if you think that way, Salam, it's well and good. We move. Me, I don't really care. I don't, I don't, Juka did not send me to school. Nobody else sent me to school. So whether I'm a lawyer, whether I'm not a lawyer, that really doesn't have anything to do with Juka. It doesn't have anything to do with anybody. If Juka feels that I'm not a lawyer and that is what really makes her happy, then I respect that. I'm not going to you know, say anything towards that. I totally and wholeheartedly respect that's her opinion. Um, and then, you know, we just move on with that. That's not really, ma that doesn't matter to me. But what matters is the fact that if I said that she was charged on a second offense, then I must have misspoke. Absolutely, you know, and I, and I would take my words back because that's not what I meant. What I meant was um, she was, um, she was being investigated and that's why she's under detention for that offense. Okay. 
So that's it. I'm done. I, I think I think I spoke more than 30 minutes, but that was my 30 minutes that I wanted to explain. And finally, again, I will reiterate. I say sorry and apologize to everybody, to all you guys watching me, my Facebook friends, followers, for seeing me in that way. I totally apologize. It was as a result of, 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 of this um, girl putting my daughter into her stuff. And that's why I responded. But I've never responded. Never. Nobody can say I've ever responded. And like I said, and I'm going to repeat again, if anybody, if anybody wants to judge me on that one single mistake and error, carry on and do so. That's your bloody business, to be honest. I don't care. Do it. I do not care. I know who I am, and that's what is sufficient for me. Anyways, um, so let's go into this case. Now, the first thing I want to address is this confusion. Because the first, the, 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 the most rife confusion is this notion that the case in Dakar is a civil case and not a criminal case. So the first thing I want to say is that is false. The case in Senegal is indeed a criminal case and not a civil case. There's nothing that anybody should tell you. There's nothing that anybody should say. There's nothing that anybody should make you believe that it is a civil case. It is not a civil case. It is a criminal case. Now, how do you distinguish between a civil and a criminal case. The mere fact, the mere fact that it is not the lawyers, it is not the private lawyers of Cham that are prosecuting Aisha, that are taking this case on, but it is the public prosecutor of Senegal under the justice delivery mechanism of Senegal tells you it is a criminal case. F Cham made a complaint. And on the basis of his complaint, the prosecutor deemed that there was sufficient evidence to prosecute this case. And that was why Aisha was arrested. Now, I'll tell you something else. A person cannot be arrested on a civil case because it is between two individuals. The prevalent rule, the prevalent rule and procedure and regulation guiding a civil case is that the parties are seeking justice but it is outside the domain of the state. The state is not involved. They have not committed an offense. But I want to make certain things clear. That because a person decides to take something through a civil route. Does not mean that there is no element of criminality. What do I mean? I'll repeat again. Because a person decides to take a matter through a civil route does not mean that there is an, an, uh, the, an absence of, criminal, of criminality or a criminal element. Now I'll give you a simple example and a simple scenario. If I walk outside this door If I walk outside this door And my neighbor gives me a hot slap Dislocate my jaw I'm going to say what I I'm going to repeat it If I walk out this door now And my neighbor gives me a hot slap And I dislocate my jaw I can come back into my house. I can try to mend my jaw. 
And tomorrow in the morning, I will go to the hospital. When I go to the hospital, I will be treated for my fractured jaw. I will be treated for my fractured jaw. Now, I don't know for other places, but let's say in England, you would have a medical report. You would have x-rays. This would be on fire. Now, I wake up a week after, I consult my lawyer. And I say, I'm taking my neighbor to court. I'm suing him in court for, 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 for causing damage to my jaw. And for the fact that for the past one week, I have not been able to go to work. So I have had loss of earnings. And that way I'm suing him because he damaged my jaw. Which as a result, I couldn't go to work. So he has to pay me. And I take him to court. What is that? It is a civil case. I want you guys to pay attention correctly to what I'm saying. Me, I don't force people to believe what I'm saying. I don't force people. I don't insult people. I don't disparage people to believe me or side by me. I speak the truth as I understand it. I explain the law as I know it. And I leave you to use your, your thinking capacity. To use logic and come to your conclusion. And the, the irony of it all is even the people that hate me. That keep telling people that I'm talking nonsense. They listen to me. They learn from me. They watch my videos. Even if they, even, even, even if they come back again and watch it 20 hours after, they do. So going back to my point, what is that? It is a civil case. I'm suing my neighbor for fracturing my jaw. I'm suing my neighbor because I never, I lost earning because I couldn't go to work. That is civil, yeah? Okay. Now, as we're going along this case, my neighbor's lawyer keep arguing. I'm saying that no, he didn't really fracture my jaw. He just did this. He just did that. It wasn't a fracture, you know. We're going back and forth that. Whilst we're doing that, I decide that, you know what? To hell with this civil case. This guy is a leggy, sir. He wants to yab me. I go to the police. When I go to the police, I lodge a complaint that I walked out of my door and my neighbor slapped me. And the police ask me what evidences I have. I give the police the police report. The medical report. I show them my fractured jaw. I show them x-rays. To add to the evidence. I showed the defense. In the civil suit. Where my neighbor did not deny slapping me. But my my, all, all he said was he did not fracture my jaw. The police have prima facie evidence that has been established on what ordinarily people in my community would have said was a civil suit. And the police would now go for my neighbor. He would be arrested and he would be charged for assault, grievous bodily harm or whatever it is. So you see how a civil case has now and at all times had solid, solid ingredients of criminality where you could actually explore the criminal route and at the same time exploring the civil route. Now, when, when, the, when the police decide to prosecute my neighbor, the matter will not be against my neighbor and against me. 
It will be my neighbor against the state. My neighbor against the crown. I will not spend one dime in that prosecution. Whilst in the civil suit, I'm paying my heads off to pay my private lawyers to advance that suit. Now, once the police kickstart that criminal prosecution and charge my neighbor, does it mean the civil suit that I'm doing with my neighbor will stop? Can somebody say that, oh, you're taking advantage because this is a civil, now you change it to criminal? Can it stop? Will the police criminal suit stop the civil suit? I want to see the comments. I want, I want to know if people are understanding me. If I'm not making sense, put it there. Tell me, boy, you're not making sense. Boy, you're stupid. I'll shut this life and I'll go to bed. I have better things to do. I'm sorry, guys. I have to get up for a minute. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I have a boss, I have a boss in this house, and um, I had to sort him out. <laughs> I'm so sorry, oh boy. Okay, so, so, so you see, yeah? and that is the same thing. Charm sued Aisha Fati in Gambia, that was a civil suit. Does it mean it does not have a criminal element? Does it mean it does not have a criminal dimension? Does it mean that he's taking advantage of Aisha because he decided to explore the criminal element in it? Now, I will go back to my neighbor. I will go back to my neighbor. So because my neighbor is being prosecuted in court, does that mean that my neighbor is guilty? Because if my neighbor was guilty, there's no need for prosecution. But the reason why you take the matter to court is to test the veracity of the allegation. You take the matter to court so that the court would look at the evidences, the court will look at the facts, and the court will come to a conclusion to say that yes, he's guilty, or no, he's not guilty. Now we go back to the issue of Aisha Fati. I'm saying there is a criminal element that has satisfied the prosecutors in Dakar, and that is why they decided to prosecute the case. Does that mean Aisha is guilty? No, I have never said that. I have never said that. What I am saying is, I'm pointing out the factual issues that are surrounding the case. And I'm saying that nobody that is supporting Aisha or supporting Cham can determine or say that there is no criminal element. Because the courts have satisfied itself that indeed there is criminal element and that is why the matter is being investigated. Now let's go back a little bit. Now 
Now, let me explain the issue I had with the reporting of Keksane in Dakar. I, th I think I need to say that. I've explained to him, so I just thought I need to trash this out. I never said Keksane was lying. There's no way that I've ever said that. If anybody said that, that, that is the individual who's lying. I never said he was lying. But I also have my faculties within me. And I also have my right to think. I also have my right to, to make analysis. And look at things critically. I don't, I don't just take things and, and, and like hook, line and sinker and just swallow them. I look at it. I flip it upside down. I'm not there. At that time, the only thing I depended on was the report that Kex did, which I did not see on Kex while I saw it on Kerfatu. And I've told Kex this. Now, the issue I had with that reporting was where Kex mentioned, and I still have a, a screenshot of that Kerfatu post. Later, later, Kex qualified it and explained. But his initial post was that the prosecutors told the court that the, the file was empty, there was no evidence, etc., etc. Now, the context in which Kex made that reporting to a Gambian public that is under the common law, it would mean that it would be translated as how a prosecutor at the police headquarters goes to court to prosecute a crime and then tells the court the file is empty. Because Kex did not, in his reporting, distinguish and make the readers and the people that are following him understand the distinction between the Senegalese justice system and the English common law system where what he was referring to as the prosecutor was not actually the prosecution that was prosecuting Aisha. I don't know. Maybe I think what I just said it sounds so confusing. <laughs> Even when I listen to myself, I sound a little bit confusing. So I'm going to say it again. When you read the report of Kex, to say that the prosecutor have stated there is nothing in the file, that there are no evidences. And the, the greater audience of Kex is the people in Gambia and other parts of the world that are more au fait to the common law jurisdiction and system where the police that prosecute crimes are known as the prosecutors. So when Kex reported that the prosecutor has said that there is no case, the message that was being sent to the public, even though that was not the intent of Kex, was that in our balance, in our understanding, in the understanding of most people, it would be that the prosecution team, the people that are prosecuting Aisha, go to court to tell the court that there is no case. And I argued robustly to say that this is not possible. And I still stand my ground. Now, if you want to ask me, Mel, how is this not possible? I'll give you a classic and clear example. I'll give you a clear example. Now, if we had gone by, if we had gone by not distinguishing what Kex meant by prosecutor, public prosecutor, and the prosecuting team that is prosecuting Aisha, why would the prosecutor now appeal the judgment of the court? I'm asking questions to my audience. I want this to be interactive. If we assumed that there was no distinction between the prosecutor that Kex was mentioning, and we just think that it is the prosecution, it is the prosecutor, just like in Gambia, that goes to court prosecuting a crime, and then he tells the court there is no evidence. Why is it that now, today, the prosecution, the prosecutor, the public prosecutor, has appealed against the judgment of that court? What it means is, 
in simple logic that the prosecutor that Kex was referring to was not the prosecution team and it was not the person, the institution prosecuting Aisha. Because the institution, the entity prosecuting Aisha, they are now saying they are dissatisfied with the judgment of the court. They are saying they don't agree with the judgment of the court. They are saying that they believe they have sufficient evidence and that is why they are appealing the judgment of the court. And that is why if you go on my Facebook, you would see the order from the registry where the prosecutor, the public prosecutor, has appealed against the judgment of that court. Now, there are two appeals now that are running concurrently. The first appeal is the appeal against the judgment with the criminal element coming from the prosecutor. And then there is a private appeal by the lawyers of charm appealing the fact that damages were not awarded. I don't know if I'm making sense. So the prosecutor that was prosecuting Aisha is not happy with the judgment. The institution is not happy with the judgment. The whole team of the prosecution is not happy with the judgment and they have appealed that judgment. Now, not only is that the only single appeal with regards to that case, there is another appeal that is running concurrently that is also appealing that same judgment and that is from the, from the private lawyers of Cham. And they are saying that they are appealing the fact that in the criminal case, Cham was asking for damages side by side with the criminal case, the criminal element of the case. Because Senegalese jurisdiction allows for that. Whilst in the Gambian jurisdiction, what would have happened is that the police, the police will prosecute when there is judgment in your favor and it is determined, then you would use that judgment to go to the civil court and ask for damages on the basis of that judgment. Now, I'm going to go back to my neighbor to make it easy for you to understand. So, even though I have a civil suit against my neighbor and then the police are now prosecuting my neighbor for criminal whatever, bodily, grievous bodily harm, assault, whatever. Now, if I, in, in England, in the common law jurisdiction in Gambia, I will only sue for damages after I have obtained the police, ju the judgment from the prosecution where it states that the, the, my neighbor has been found guilty. Now, if my neighbor has been found guilty... And I have that judgment in my favor to say that my neighbor has been found guilty for, for, for assault. Then I can use that judgment and go to the civil court, go through the civil route and ask for damages. Because a court of law, a competent court has already determined that my neighbor is guilty. My neighbor is culpable. I don't have to go back to the court, the civil court to prove those things because the 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 criminal court has established that, yes, my neighbor is guilty. So all I have to argue in the civil court is the issue of damages to quantify how much have I lost? What is my earning that I lost? What has this um, broken jaw, fractured jaw done to me? So that is what is happening in Senegal because of the different structure of the justice system. So you have, the, you have the appeal from the prosecutor that is appealing the judgment. And then you have the private lawyers of Cham who have also entered an appeal against the judgment, but in the section of damages that should have come with that judgment if it was in favor of the allegations of Cham. Do you understand? Are you guys getting me? Is there any confusion? You can ask questions before I move to the second part. You can ask questions before I move to the second part. If I've confused you, if there's anything that you're confused about, just ask.
So that's clear. Now, before I move to the second bar. So, in my explanation, have I insulted Aisha? Does it show that I'm, 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 I'm against Aisha? No. Except you want me to lie. If that's what anybody wants me to do, let them tell me that I am Mel, go and lie. And then I will tell them I will not lie. I will just keep quiet and I will never talk about this case. Have I lied? Have I said anything that is a lie? Have I said anything that is confusing? Have I insulted Aisha? Have I said Aisha is guilty? No, I've not said that. I am explaining the legal process. I'm explaining the law. There's nobody, there's nobody that can, even if they write and sit and get original documents from the court, they get every, you cannot interpret it more than me. I am the lawyer, not you. You will not, never be able to interpret it more than me. You are fighting a lost cause. You are fighting a lost battle. I am the lawyer. I understand the legal principles. I understand the intricacies of litigation. You will never be able to explain it more than me. Even if you do a live and say you are getting the documents from source, even if the high court is sending it directly to your email, you will never be able to explain it more than I do. And that is the fact. And you have to recognize that fact. Now let's move to the second bit. The second bit is, has Aisha been released today? I'm asking a question. Is, has Aisha been released? Because that was what was being said. There has been three Fridays now that they said the case is over and Aisha is coming home. My question to you all is, has Aisha returned home? Has Aisha been released? Have you seen pictures and videos of Aisha chilling, enjoying and having fun in the streets of Dakar? I'm asking the questions and I need you to answer so that I'll be able to go on. Because if yes, she's been released and you see her t chilling, eating, dining somewhere, then there's no need for me to continue. Then it means they are right and I am wrong. It's Friday today. The fact of the matter is everybody said that she will be out today. She will go home today. It's Friday. And I'm asking because what I do is I analyze things. It does not mean, you see, the problem is, and this is why I say the dictator is us. We are the dictators because if anybody looks at what I'm saying critically, you would know that I am not against Aisha. I am putting the facts there so that the average person can understand. Now, understanding the legal process does not mean you shouldn't support Aisha. I said it, Nene said it, that even when we were doing the Bob Keta case, that even if Bob is guilty, it does not mean Dumoko support. It does not mean Damagi Nasi Ganawam. So, you cannot expect me to lie. You cannot ex expect me to circumvent the legal process. I will not do it. I will just keep quiet and shut up, but I will not lie. You can still support Aisha. We can all still support Aisha. We can do whatever, but the legal process has to be understood. And that is the fact. You cannot gaslight the people that are following you. You cannot gaslight people that don't understand. You can't circumvent the legal process. You can't. There's nothing you say because people have common sense. People will listen to you. They will come and I know some people, some, some of us are hypocrites. They will go on your lives and say, yes, the Fafen, Hamudara. But they know what you are saying is the Fen. Because they know what I'm saying makes common sense. It is logical. If the case has ended, why is Aisha in detention? You want to tell me there's no justice system in Senegal? Or you want to tell me the entire Senegalese justice system is going against Aisha? Does that make sense to you? Is that what they want you to believe? And I'm telling you, don't believe it. I'm telling you, have an open mind in this case and make your own informed decisions. That's all I'm saying. I've never said Aisha is guilty. I've never said Aisha is bad. I've never said any of those things. It is not my business to say. 
They are the ones doing that. Let them do it. I don't have time for that. I am giving an analysis on the case, undiluted, unbiased, straight to the fact, the point. And I'm not forcing anybody to believe me. If you don't want to believe me, just get off my life and go. You don't want to believe me, tell me, Mel, you're lying. Then you go and go to sleep. Go watch other people that are saying the truth. I'm putting the facts out there. You have brains. You have common sense. I know Gambians are not stupid. Gambians have brains. Senegalese people are not stupid. Just make up your mind and decide. If the case is over, why is Aisha in detention? Have you ever seen a case where a person anywhere in the world, a person is acquitted and discharged? I mean, when I, when I hear the word acquit and discharge, it makes me laugh because they showed me a video of somebody on, like in TikTok that was like insulting me. And then the guy couldn't even pronounce acquit. He's like, loyal, Hamud acute, or whatever. Acute. He said, Hamud acute. I'm like, you know what? Go back and tell this guy, when you learn how to pronounce the word acquit, come back to me and then we'll talk. But until you can pronounce the word acquit and know what it means, then I'm not even going to give you any relevance. But the question to ask is, if she was acquitted and discharged, why is she still in detention? I'll explain. So according to Senegalese procedures, there's a right of appeal within 30 days after a judgment. And I'll tell you what is happening now. You see, I heard somebody I had somebody say that when the case goes to appeal, Is going to be based on errors of law alone. You see, they forget. They forget that the Senegalese justice system is so radically different from common law ju jurisdiction. So the, 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 the case with Aisha Fati was under the flagrandelli route. But because of the appeal, it would be no longer on that route. It would appear as if the case has started again. If the appeal is accepted... It would appear as if the case starts all over again. Go and read Senegalese legal procedure. The appellate jurisdiction of the flagra of, of, of the flagrandelli route will start. It will recommence the case again from start. It is not like the common law system where the appeal will be based on the errors of law. No, it's a different. It will start afresh on the basis of the appeal when it succeeds. And it would not be the flagrant daily route or route. It would be a different route. Now, the reason why Aisha's phone was not returned to her is because there is this period of 30 days which allows for the prosecution to appeal the judgment of that court. So if they had not made an appeal, then Aisha would have had her phone back at the expiration of that, of that time frame. And then she would have gone her way. They would have, she would have gone. But the reason why Aisha is in detention is not because of this case. Aisha is in detention because she is being investigated on an allegation of fraud. That is why she is in detention. Now, if anybody tells you that is not true, I want you to, I want you to ask them this question. Tell them to explain to you 
and tell you why would Aisha be acquitted and discharged of the blackmail case and yet still she is under detention. Both, both cases, well, I could say one has not metamorphosed into a charge, into a formal charge, but the matter that is being investigated is a criminal case. The flagrandelli case that has just ended is a criminal case. The flagrandelli judgment has just been appealed. But the, the case that is being investigated, the second case of fraud, of allegation of fraud, is why Aisha is in detention. So the people that are saying that the other case is a civil case are telling you a lie. Because you cannot detain a person. You cannot arrest a person. You cannot keep a person in prison. You cannot keep a person in, in detention on a civil case. Senegal is not Monkey Island. You cannot keep a person in detention because of a civil case. The fact is, the fact is, the reason why she's detained, the reason why her rights are curtailed, the reason why she does not have her freedom of movement is because she is being investigated for a criminal case of fraud, which is not a civil case. They can bring the roof down. They can say it in Chinese or whatever they want to say. The fact is, it is not a civil case. The only civil case between Aisha Fati and Chan is in the Gambia being litigated in the Gambian courts. Now, let me ask another question. Oh no, I needed to tell you this. I'll tell you the exceptions. The exceptions to where a person in a civil case can be detained. One, if I take Paos to court on a civil matter, and then I see Paos at the airport with a Gambia experience ticket, with pulling along his carrion, I can inform the court that I have solid belief. I have probable belief that Pa Os is fleeing the jurisdiction because of the civil case. And in that instant, Pa Os can be arrested for the fact that he has a case to answer in court between me and him. Those are the exceptions. One, so a civil suit where you believe the person is absconding and for the person to answer to the suit and allow for the suit to reach its legal and logical conclusion, they would arrest that person to prevent that person from going. And these are in very rare circumstance because the court always refused to get into that bit where in a civil matter, a person is arrested and detained. That's one. Two is where a person is, super, uh, is, is, is asked to testify. You're asked to testify and you refuse to come. You have a supernatural that has been taken out against you. And you refuse to testify, the court can ask for your arrest in order to bring you before the court to testify. These are some of the exceptions. There's a third one. There's a third one. I think I think in common law is job. This is judgment debt I, I don't know. I don't want to say something. I don't know. But there's a third one. There's a third one. That's where, these are the exceptions where you would be committed, you would be arrested. But ordinarily in a civil case, there's no arrest. 
There is no arrest. But the fact is, the fact is, and this is what, you know, you see, it's very easy. You can tell people the truth. You can make people understand and still get people to support you on the truth and still get people to support you on the facts. Because if you know and agree, if you agree on the fact that this is the situation, then you even have more help. The fact is, Aisha hasn't gone free yet. We don't know what the investigations will unfold. They can investigate and decide that, oh, there's nothing. They can't charge her, they let her go. They can investigate and believe that, yes, there's solid evidence against her and she needs to be prosecuted. But the fact is, it is a criminal case. And the sad part is, The sad part is, the time frame for this investigation is not carved on stone. It is not clearly defined. It is not clearly defined. So, it could last, it could, it could happen in a week. It's just like police investigations. Police cannot tell you they're investigating for this number of time. I mean, in Gambia, it's worst. In Gambia, police can investigate crimes for years they will tell you they're still investigating they can investigate crimes for months but the difference is and sometimes in gambia i think it is in gambia it is clearly defined because in gambia investigations will be ongoing as long as they have prima facie evidence they can put you in remand in detention and continue with the rest of the investigation. Especially in offenses where it is not it is non bailable. But the difference in Senegal is these investigations, from what I have been informed and what from, from what I've realized, is that they are non bailable offenses. Because ordinarily you would have expected that Aisha would be granted bail and then they would they would be investigating, but no, it doesn't work like that, it seems. But the fact is, it is a criminal case. Now, lastly, I want to address the issue about the speculation that Aisha is pregnant and on the basis of her pregnancy, she would be let, let loose. She would be allowed to go home. And the fact is, being pregnant being pregnant does not equal freedom in Senegal and even in common law jurisdiction. People give birth in prisons. People give birth in detention centers. That is why prison facilities have hospitals, have healthcare centers, have access to um, 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 medical facilities, access to everything. So there's this notion that's going on that for the fact that she's pregnant, she's going to be released. No, that is false. She can never be released on the basis of a pregnancy. Pregnancy does not amount to innocence. She would never. There are people that give birth in prisons. They can move her from the prison to go and give birth in a hospital and bring her back. Being pregnant does not absolve you from criminal liability. It is common sense. It's common sense. There are people who are sick in prison until they're dying. They will take them to the hospital and you will have a prison warden or a prison guard sitting by their bed, their bedside. They are still in detention. They are not freed. So, so, so pregnancy does not equal freedom. It does not. So it is, it is a bit of a misconception there. Now, somebody has asked a question, which I find very interesting. 
So if you look at the, I think it was on the Standard newspaper. Was it the Standard that I read it? Where it mentioned that the court had admitted the bank statements of Aisha in the civil suit in Gambia. I'm just giving you an example. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you the, the correlation that, you know, the, how the civil suit and the criminal matter are intertwined and can be, it, it, sometimes it's so difficult to separate it when it comes to the facts, when it comes to the evidences. Now, it is, it is, it is, it is alleged and I believe so to be true based on the bank statement. And that is why I believe the, the lawyers for Aisha were doing their best to ensure that the bank statement is not admitted in evidence. Because I believe those bank statements would go against Aisha and in favor of Cham. The reason why I say so is because the bank statement would reflect because what the plaintiff, what Cham is alleging in that civil suit is that once Aisha knew or found out that the civil suit was ongoing, that she was served to appear in court in that civil suit, she withdrew 118,000 euros from her, account, from her bank account. She withdrew other sums of money from her bank account. So these are very clear indications of the way I see that the courts would interpret this is trying to circumvent the will of justice. Because the court will feel that if, if, if you are really within your rights, and you believe that you can establish that these monies were actually given to you as gifts. There was no need for Aisha to withdraw 118,000 euros, X million dollars here from Echo Bank, X million from GT Bank. Because what that means and what, and the way the court will interpret that is you're trying to circumvent the wheel of justice. Because if you believe that you can leave evidence in court to show that these monies were given to me as gifts, why do you want to dispose of that? And this is what I feel would also be used in the fraud case in the car to show that it is not ordinary. It is not, you see. When you take the reasonable man's test that the court will use to look at things, it is not a reasonable thing for somebody all of a sudden, because they're going to look at the accounts, they're going to look at the movements of funds. It is not, it is not just ordinary for somebody to just go into their bank account when a lawsuit has been filed in court and they have to defend that lawsuit and all of a sudden 118,000 euros is withdrawn. X number of money is withdrawn. These monies have not been disposed of. The court is not a fool. The court has the court has to use common sense. They have to use the law. They have to use logic. They have to look at the facts. They look at the evidences. All of these come together. Allow them to make an informed judgment. I can give you an example. It's like if somebody says that you are fighting for a property. This excess is mine, excess is mine. And whilst you are fighting for that property, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, that property disappears or you burn down the property. What would that mean? But if you stay in the property and say, you know what? I know this is mine. Let the courts decide. Let the courts decide. So you see, for me, I think that is something problematic that would come on. I don't even know how problematic it would be in the determination of the civil suit, but I am sure absolutely it will be a very problematic issue in the criminal case in Dakar, if at all, the element of fraud or the issue of fraud 
the allegation of fraud is upheld by the investigatory team and they decide they're going to charge Aisha for fraud. That would be one issue that would be a problem. The other bits I wouldn't know yet, but for me that would be an issue because she would have to defend. Okay? The courts, what the courts would look at, the courts would look at when were you served? This man is saying that he gave you money for business. He gave you five dollars for business. And we serve you to come to court to show to the court why you shouldn't give this man back his five dollars. But when we served you on Monday, and you know you had to come to court to defend this suit on Monday, on Thursday, you went to the bank and you withdrew the five dollars. Where is the five dollars? Why did you withdraw the five dollars when you know that that five dollars is what that man is saying that he gave to you? So you see how this can be used in the criminal case in the car. I don't know what the evidences are. I'm not sure of what has been presented to, to the investigators as of now. But one thing is clear and one thing is certain is that it is a criminal case. No amount of, 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 of social media brickmanship or, or hustle and bustle, huff and puff can change the fact that it is a criminal case. And the sooner they accept and understand that it is a criminal case, the better it is. And somebody asked a very important question. He says, what if there wasn't anything documented to show money was given for business purposes? You see, the fact is, I've tried to explain this. The fact is, if Aisha has denied that they did not give her the money, that would be, that it would be easy to tell. But the fact that she has been given the money, it is for Aisha to show that no, the money was given me for something else. Because it is established that the man gave you the money. The bank accounts, the movement show that the money is there. This is not an abstract. It is showing that the money is there. And the man is saying, it is a man and his property. If the man is saying, The man is saying, The man is saying, I did not give it to you. And now you are saying, no, but you gave it to me. It is for you to prove that I gave it to you. So I don't understand this question is documents and stuff. This is common sense. If she said that, no, they didn't give me nothing. You didn't give me nothing. Then that's a different, but then the man has to prove that, yes, I gave you. The man has to prove that, yes, I gave you. But if you are saying, yes, you gave me, it's like, I don't know, me sometimes, child, boy. I don't know if me, I'm the one that thinks different, or maybe like they say, I'm just stupid. Because I had to say I'm stupid as well. I know that in all my life, I have been tagged everything except stupidity. I've been, I've been tagged everything except stupidity. If a person determines I'm stupid, I'm telling I swear to the almighty God, you are even more stupid and you need to be checked. Any person that thinks Melville Robertson Roberts is stupid, well, Lahi, I'm telling you today on Facebook Live, you need to be assessed you need to really be checked because you yourself, you are stupid beyond measure. Because nobody can look at me and call me stupid. I've never been called stupid in my life. I've been called everything except stupid. I know this as a matter of fact. You can ask people that went to school with me from primary school, from Methodist primary to Gambia High School, to college, to America, to Kirkwood, to University of Washington, to Gambia. I've never been called stupid. You can never call me stupid. To Oxford, you can never call me stupid. You can call me everything except stupidity. I've been to Beijing, China. I've been to Pakistan. I've been to Geneva. Um, you can't call me stupid. I've never sat in any room where, where it comes to academics and anybody have called me stupid. Well, Lahi, you are the stupid ones, man. You can't call me stupid. Even if you call me stupid to get at me, it doesn't get at me because I know I'm not stupid. I know I'm not. I'm presenting facts to you, undisputed. And you're having sleepless nights, rebutting 
coming up with solid rebuttals to what I'm saying. The best thing is, I went to school. I had, I had go. You know what? You know what I'm gonna do. From common entrance, from common entrance in Methodist primary. Let me say this. Let me brag a little bit. From common entrance, and the people that I went to school with can tell you. John Dahlia, where are you? Few people that I can tell you. Common entrance. I had the highest mark. From the first mock exam, I had the highest mark in my school. Highest grade. The highest grade. I went to Gambia High School. I did O-levels with all my contemporaries. I can tell you I had the highest score amongst all of them. Amongst all of them. I went to Gambia High School. There's not a single year. Every single year of my schooling in Gambia High School, I received best student prizes for various subjects in school. And the pictures are on my Facebook wall. Go and look at it. And, I'm, and now I'm challenging you guys. I'm challenging you guys. Let's come out and put our transcripts on social media. The people that feel that you're more smarter than me, you're more intelligent than me, we're going to do a challenge now. From primary school, me, I've kept all my report, all my results, I have them. From primary school, I'm telling you, from common entrance to Oxford. And for you, and, and for people that don't know, let me say this. I had a full scholarship. A full scholarship. Even my lodging, my feeding, my, everything was paid for in Oxford. And that was not a joke. They didn't give it to me because my face was black. Oxford University, they don't know you. They don't know, you know my uncle is also your uncle is your brother's brother, your granny's brother. No. So I'm daring you now. I'm challenging you to come out. Come out and bring your transcripts. You want to know if I'm a lawyer? Bring your transcripts. I'll bring, I'll bring my I'll, I'll bring my bar certificate. I'll bring my enrollment certificate as a solicitor of the Supreme Court of the Gambia. I'll bring everything. I'll bring all my master's degree certificates. I'll bring everything. If you want, I can even bring everything you want. I'll bring it. And then you bring yours too. Anyways, me that, that was just a joke passing. So let's forget about all those things. But the fact is, I know that I am explaining to people that want to know and I'm breaking it down for them to understand. Now, if you decide that you have an agenda, if you decide that you have a movement where you want people to believe what is not the fact and what is not true, then that is fine. That is fine. You are free to do that. You are free to do that. But I will re robustly defend my position. And that is why I have asked the question, is Aisha Fati released and is she free today? Is she in Gambia today? Is Friday? Was she released last Friday? Was she released the Friday before that? The fact that she is still in detention is because she's being investigated for an allegation of fraud. And that is a criminal offense. It's got no civil nothing civil about it if anybody comes to you and tells you it's civil i am telling you to challenge them but there's nothing civil about it you don't investigate civil cases and the person is kept in detention whilst investigations are ongoing it is devoid of logic it is devoid of common sense it does not make sense it does not hold water do not believe it And let me say this, the only time I will keep my mouth shut is when I'm dead. It's when I'm dead. No amount of gaslighting, no amount of insults. You can put me up on Facebook Live morning to night. does not shake me, man. I'm going to finish this live. I'm going to go sit down. I'm going to watch TV. I'm going to go eat some nice Nyebe Res Benetin and Oyster and Kong and live my life. Me, I've been, since, since I was born, Nyungma Saga. If you think Saga is going to affect me now, then you're bloody stupid. I'm sorry, excuse my language. Then you're insane. Saga doesn't affect me. 
I've made this very clear. And, 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 and a testament to the fact that saga does not affect me. The fact, the, 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 the uh, sorry, I was reading a comment and I got distracted. A testament to the fact that Saga does not affect me is the fact that this person has been sagging me for five years. I've never responded to her because she's insignificant. She's mental. She's a psychiatric, um, a psychiatric patient. I don't listen to nothing she says. I don't see it. I don't want to know. She's downright mental. So if you saga me for five years, I didn't bother. Then you, to tell a person it's mental. Let me explain. Let's, let's get into the rationale. To tell a person it's mental. It's when a person consistently and constantly takes a particular agenda, a particular path, and you're still not moved. You've done it for five years, I'm not moved, huh? So something is wrong with you. Because I'm not moved, it does not bother me. It, it has gone to a point that it doesn't even bother the people that follow you. Even the people that listen to you, it doesn't bother them no more. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me. Insult me, what does that do? You tell lies against me, what does that do? You do whatever. You can bring the whole camp. I'm not moved. Because you know what? I'm blessed. That's what people don't know. I'm blessed. I am absolutely blessed. Me, I'm blessed by my parents. I'm blessed by my mother. What is not my destiny cannot be orchestrated by any man. Let me tell you people this. You don't know me. What is not my destiny? What God has not set for me? The path that God has not created for me? There is no man born of man and woman that can derail it. There is no one who can alter my destiny. My destiny is secured. My destiny is in the hands of God. I am covered by the blood from head to toe. You don't know me. You fight me, you will see your destruction. You go against me, you will see your destruction. I hold no evil against any man. The blessings I possess, they walk with me daily. And I keep telling you people this. That even though I walk through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. And surely, me, I don't know for anyone, I believe at the right moment, at the right time, God will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And he will anoint my head with oil. You think I'm moved? You must be joking. Then you don't know me. You don't know me. I will go through the fire. It will not burn me. I will go through the waters. It will not overwhelm me. Because I know where I stand. My feet is solid on a rock. I believe in the living God. I do no man no evil. Yeah, you can say, yeah, he gets angry. He got angry that day. That don't say, that don't know. He who has no sin, let them cast the first stone. Some of you, some of you, you do things that are more dirtier than me coming out and cussing in public. The things you do behind closed doors. The things you do what that people don't see. The things you say against people that you made to believe that you are on their side. You do worse than I that came out publicly to cuss. At least I have the I have the audacity, I have the strength to come back and apologize to people that follow me and respect me. But what do you do behind closed doors? What do you do? Thank you. A thousand may fall on my side, but ten thousand at my right side. But it will not come near me because I am blessed. I am blessed. Sometimes my blessing, my blessing confuses my enemies because they've plotted all manner of things against me. But the God that I serve, 
has always kept me through. And he will always be my strength. He will always be my shield and buckler. The God I serve has never failed and he will never fail me. Not today, not yesterday, not ever. Whatever you want, whatever you want to do, say, carry on and do it. I've read the 48 laws of power. Yes, I've done that. I've read it. I've read the Prince Machiavelli. I've read all these books. Yes, I've done it. But anyways, to cut a long story short, that was it. I wanted to explain these things. I think I've adequately explained them. I have addressed it adequately. And lastly, I will repeat, I will summarize what I've just said. And the fact is both, both cases, both cases, if I had said, if I had, if I misspoke and said that she was charged, I absolutely apologize and I'm sorry she has not been charged on the second case, but that case is being investigated and that is the reason why she's in detention. The, the flagrandelli case that has just been appealed, it has been appealed by the prosecutor and by the lawyers of Chan. The appeal would, in a, in a few weeks, I um, probably don't know the time frame, it will, I mean, it will kick start. The investigations, we don't have a time frame. We don't know how long it's going to last, but it is being investigated. And the fact is Aisha is still in detention. Did I say Aisha is guilty? No, I've never said that. Did I say? No, I've never said that. What I have consistently said is that I do not, I as a person, when I look at, look at the, 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 the case, I, I look at the flagrandelli case that was just concluded. I believe, I believe, and I, and, that the phone, the phone, um, that, that Aisha has should have been tested. That is what I have continued to say. And that's my belief. And nobody can take my belief away from me. You can't insult me for my belief, can you? I'm not insulting you for your belief. So that is my belief. I believe the court was duty bound to test that phone. I believe that that phone should have been forensically examined in the realm of technology to ascertain the allegations. I believe that absolutely. But for those that think I was talking stupid, the question that you should now ask yourself, if Melville was wrong, why is the prosecutor in Senegal appealing the case? The reason why the prosecutor is appealing the case is because the prosecutor is thinking like Melville. So I want you to say this to them. If they're watching or whoever is watching that says I'm stupid, I'm telling you the prosecutor in Senegal, the public prosecutor is thinking like Melville. And that is why the prosecutor has appealed the judgment of the flagrandelli case in the allegation of, of, of blackmail because that phone was not tested. And that is what the public prosecutor believe. That is what the lawyers of Cham believe. And that was what Melville has been saying. So Melville, the prosecutor, Cham's lawyers are thinking in the same direction. I didn't advise them, did I? Or are you now, are you now saying that Melville is advising the lawyers in Senegal, including the prosecutors? The fact is, intelligence is intelligence, knowledge is knowledge, education is education, but there's a clear distinction between knowledge and education. I wish you guys all the best. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to give 10 minutes. If you have any question that you want me to ask, I will answer and then I'm off and I'm gone. Love you so much more, Auntie Ify. I love you too. Is there anybody that wants to ask me any question? Anything I've said that you misunderstood? Anything that I said that is not clear? If there's any question that you want to ask, you can ask me now. I've got like another five, ten minutes. I'll try to answer the question if I can. If I can't, I'll tell you I can't. And then I will go back and come back. Um, Susan, can she be released on bail? No, under the circumstances, she cannot be released on bail. Even in the blackmail case, she was not released on bail. She was denied bail. And in this one that is in, that is being investigated, no, she is not, she is not, um, she is not, um, she can't be a subject, um, she can't be subjected to bail, um, until after the investigations. And from what I've, what I've researched and what I've concluded is that even whilst that case is ongoing, 
um, she would not be granted bail. That is what I, 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 I have concluded. I may be radically wrong, but no. But no. Do, do I wish for that? No, I don't. I don't. I absolutely don't. All I'm doing is I'm just saying what the law is. What advice can you give Aisha? Ah, boy. For now, I wouldn't say what advice I'm giving because apparently everybody thinks I hate Aisha. Everybody, me, I know I don't hate Aisha. But I will not even begin to tell these people. So I know, I will not say it, sir. Let me keep quiet. But anyways, Aisha knows. I know. I'll leave it at that. But anyways, let's continue. But the ones that are saying I hate Aisha, I know I don't hate Aisha. I don't have a, what, what, what would it gain me to hate Aisha? What would it gain me to support Cham? I don't know Aisha. I don't, don't you think it would have been nice if I was going to support anybody because I wanted something? If I was going to... I mean, I had people saying, oh, 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 he wants boss or he wants this or whatever. If I wanted that, I would support Aisha. At least Aisha would give me some of the 118,000 euros or whatever. That's who I should have supported. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. It doesn't matter to me anyways. You know, that's just... You know, pichahua. Okay, Chica, Chica, me, I'm not answering that question. They leave me. He said, how can we all come together and remove the guy that says on the one and force to fossil? Leave me alone. <laughs> Any idea if she's using the same phone? If no, what about if she changes her phone? No, she's not using the phone. The phone is still with the court and the phone will be handed over to the, the, the court now, um, whoever, depending on the way the appeal goes. And I, I believe that that phone would finally be tested. Yeah. But the phone is not with her. The phone was not given to, given to her because they had to wait to ensure that the, the time frame for appeal is exhausted. So if Cham, if the prosecutor had not appealed the case within that time frame, then they would have given her the phone and that matter would have been concluded. Again, let me explain. Um, maybe I should just explain this. Yes. Yes. Um, 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 a judgment, the judgment of the flagrandelli um, case in the in the in the in the in the in the blackmail case, it's not been set aside, so that judgment holds. However, what they don't understand, the people that are saying this, is they don't understand the, the Senegalese justice system. It's not like Gambia. It's not like Gambia at all. So it has not been set aside. But the moment, the moment that the the the, the appeal is accepted. The case starts again. It's not like civil, it's not like the, the common law jurisdiction where you will go to appeal and that appeal will be determined and that, no, 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 no. It is different. It is very, very radically different, you know? It's different. It's different. But, um, hey, you know, what do I know? So, I've got three more minutes, three more minutes for another couple of questions. Um, um, Bobo, I don't know. I don't know. She might have changed phones, but you know, with iClouds and all these things, you can never tell. So we, we don't know. We don't know. Um, okay, Mohammed, Mohammed. Um, I know that is what they're saying, but I'll just ask you a question. If if that is the case. Mohammed, if that is the case that the phone holds nothing, then I think it would have been easy for them to just open the phone and just look at it, you know, rather than deny them to look at the phone. And if the phone was, if the phone was with the Gambian authorities, I think it would have been different. But I don't believe that, but I really don't know. For me, I think the only... Anyways, I don't want to talk anything for the Aisha because they said I hate Aisha. I'll just keep quiet for now. We'll get that. You know, you know, before, you see, before, before all the insults and stuff, it would have been typical me to talk about this case, give my, you know, my side on the law. And then I would have said, oh, but this is what I believe um, um, Aisha should have done. This is what I believe Aisha's lawyer should have done. This is what I think champs. That's what I normally do. You know, people that know me. If you've been following me on Facebook, on anything that I analyze, that's what I'll do. But since they're saying that I hate her, I've just decided to keep my mouth shut. I'll just stick on the on the case. I'll stick on the on the on the 
on the developments of the case. I'll, I'll, I'll debunk the fallacies, you know, anything that's said that's a lie, I will come and say, no, this is not it, that is a misconception. I'll do that. But under normal circumstances, you know, if, if that was not happening and they didn't think that I hate or whatever, or I'm part of a camp, I would have done that. I would have done that. I would have, in fact, I started saying that. In fact, I think it was on TikTok Live that I said that, oh, Aisha should have done this, or that's what the lawyer should have done. If I was, that's what I would have done. I would have given a balanced analysis, you know, give two sides. That makes it more interesting, you know, and people can look at my nonsense or, or my sense, and, you know, we debate, we talk. That's what I love. That's what I love to do. And people think, oh, he's idle. That's why he's saying, no, I do this because I love it. You are the ones that are idle doing what you do because you're looking for attention. Me, I do this because I like it. I will come on live. If one person is watching me, I'll do it. I'll be happy and I'll do it. You know? Anyways, guys, I thank you so much for joining me. And I thank you for sitting here. I see so many people watching this live. I appreciate it. And I pray that God continue to be with us all. And as um, we call it a day. And let's see what happens in the coming the coming um, um, days. If you realize... Um, I shouldn't, I, I haven't spoken, I've, I've never talked about the civil case in Gambia. The reason why I haven't talked about it because I believe it's a civil case, even though now it's taking, um, you know, it's taking like traction as in public attention. I still believe it's a civil case and I don't believe that I have much to say about it or anything. So it's a civil case. I'll leave it at that. But the criminal case in Dakar, that is something that is interesting. We'll talk about it. We'll look at it. And at some point, if, you know, people, if I have popular, you know, if I have so many requests and demand and people want us to talk about the civil case, I will talk about the civil case. I will look into the civil case and we'll analyze, we'll discuss. But until then, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Take care and do have a blessed